welcome to tarun is today we will be discussing editorial analysis from the hindu of 2nd of december 2022 so you can relate this article with your general studies paper 3 that is employment economy and majorly economy right so you can relate this article with indian economy all right so this is article titled mixed bag now let us see what the article has to say so despite inflation so the latest according to the article the latest of official gdp estimates they show economic ex economy's expansion which deaccelerated in the july september period dragged down by year on year and sequential contraction in manufacturing and mining and a broad slow down in the private consumption expenditure and government spending so after a year on year sequential contraction in manufacturing mining private consumption expenditure and the government spending the gdp latest official shows economy's expansion so therefore it is a good sign for it's a good sign for indian economy now let us let us see that what is gross domestic product now this gross domestic product it is the monetary value of all the final goods and services which are produced within a country's border in a specific time period which is generally one year right so now let us first understand the concept of gdp so basically india's official estimates of national growth are in gdp right now what happens everything that is produced in within the domestic or within the political boundary of the country is is its gdp that is that is its income so even the income earned by the foreign officials are counted in the domestic product because it's about the domestic product it's not about the national product so this is not about gnp this is about gdp so every economy activity which is final which is final so when we say final that means the intermediary goods and services are not counted the intermediary goods and services will not be counted now let me tell you something so when we say final so it is the final product that shall be consumed by the consumer so for example tea leaves for example tea leaves and we have tea so tea the properly made tea with milk etc and everything is a consumer product so it is a consumer product and it is the final product however tea leaves are not the final product they are the intermediary product they are intermediary product so therefore production of tea leaves will not be counted and thus we are going to count the consumption of tea in the country so this is how this is just for an illustration purpose this is how the gross domestic product works however there are some negatives or negatives also associated with gdp that gdp does not gives a complete or a holistic picture of the indian economy because of the fact that gdp is the final goods and services and it does not account for inequality inequality of income relative deprivation etc it does not also account for the economic degradation that's why that's why there is a new concept of green gdp this green gdp is going to consider is going to consider the environmental degradation as well that that comes uh, that goes along with the economic activity is is that right now according to the article the gdp is projected to have grown by 6.3% from the earlier from the year earlier period a sharp deacceleration from the 13.5% expansion posted in the first quarter and july september 2011 8.4% pace so in in first quarter of the year there was a deacceleration there was a deacceleration observed 
and the reasons were the sequential contractions in manufacturing mining and a broad slow down in the private consumption expenditure and also the government spending right and in july to september 2021 it was 8.4% pace and now it is projected to have grown by 6.3% so despite inflation the credit conditions they must remain supportive of the real economy so what the writer wants to say here what the writer wants to say here that world over major economies are going through inflation major economies are going through inflation however if we wish to keep the real economy real economy progressing then we must support the credit conditions then we must support the credit conditions there are situations such as layoff many of the big firms for example many of the big firms uh, like by jews many uh, many edtech companies and academy and even this uh, vedantu etc they are all have they all have been in news for laying off employees for laying off employees and recently in an article in the hindu newspaper the uh, the sundar pachai he said that macro economics is not in our hand and the attrition okay so this process of laying off employees in order to increase the productivity is known as is known as attrition so there are some situations in the world which is going on so despite inflation despite whatever that is happening despite um it, and it is the result of inflation that many of the major firms they are laying off employees so therefore the writer has to say that despite inflation and the prevailing macroeconomic conditions the credit conditions they should support the real economy now let us look at the concept of gross value added side right so so far we saw that what was happening with the with the indian economy with indian economy is that clear so article talks about that despite inflation and the prevailing macro conditions the indian economy if it could maintain the credit conditions then it will support the real economy that means that means the gdp growth which india registered recently 6.8 uh, 6.3 percentage all right so we discussed the concept of gdp now let us move on to the to the concept of gross value added side now according uh, according to the article only three of the eight sectors that is agriculture the contact intensive sectors such as hotels transportation and communication and the financial reality and professional services the posted year on year acceleration in growth and five sectors which includes like agriculture electricity gas water supply and other utility services and construction posted sequential contractions reflecting the heightened uncertainty that the global slow slowdown and the war in ukraine and the persistently persistently high domestic inflation have together endangered this is and then endangered is that clear all right now three of the sectors three of the eight sectors have registered growth and rest of the five sectors they have posed uncertainty is that clear is that now the article wants to say that the heightened uncertainty such as the war in ukraine the inflation etc and the global slowdown they all have the potential to slow down the economic growth of india right now let us talk about the concept of gross value added now the term it says that is the gross value added talks about that value has been added okay so gv8 can be defined as output produced after deducting the intermediate value of consumption 
This can also be mentioned as gross domestic product plus subsidies on products and minus taxes on product. So gross value added can be calculated by subtracting taxes on the products which are levied by the government for example the indirect taxes and by adding the subsidies which are given by the government on the product. The next thing that the article talks about on the expenditure front is the growth in both bulwark private consumption spending and government spending. Now if you see that the article was talking about about the decrease in the decrease in the private private consumption and decrease in the government spending right so these are the two things which in the first quarter registered decreased with the former logging a 9.7 percent year-on-year -year expansion compared with the first quarter growth of 25.9 percent and the latter shrinking by 4.4 percent after expanding 1.3 percent in the April June period right so basically the article is giving us the it is giving us the data say let's say this is the year this is the timeline of the year this is the first quarter and now this will be the second quarter so in the month of april and june it registered a growth of 1.3 percent otherwise there was a slowdown and now again in the month of around october to november it again has registered a growth that is year on year expansion of 9.7 percent by the private consumption and 25.9 percent increase in the government spending so this is how the graph would look like right so however the article also talks about that this increased spending in private consumption is due to the festivities is due to the festivities such as Diwali and Dhanteras and other you know festivals so this re this resulted into rebound of the private consumption that resulted into into the GDP growth that resulted into the GDP growth all right and the 3.4 quarter and quarter growth in the gross capital gross fixed capital formation it pointed to a growing willingness to invest on part of the private businesses now the chief economic advisor v anantha nageswaram he also talked about that the slowdown or the disruption which was caused by the covid 19 pandemic it was well underway and notwithstanding the global headwinds put the country on track to achieve the 6.8 percent to 7 percent growth this fiscal that is the fiscal year of 2022 to 2023 so we know that Indian economy it experienced a slowdown and this was due to the COVID-19 still the challenge which was posed by the data variability and revision now this was a concern which was raised by RBI that is the Central Bank of India the policy maker flagged this crucial element that there was some discrepancy in the entry in the latest GDP estimates which were approximately 2.9 percent however the official uh, also the official sec core sector data for october showing combined output across the eight key industries that includes cement coal fertilizers electricity and refinery products they struggle to inch its way up now these are the these are the industries that did not register growth so Paul, therefore the article says that keeping in mind these conditions the policy makers can ill afford to drop their guard as they battle to rein in growth snapping inflation and must ensure that credit conditions remain supportive of the real economy now let us have a discussion about the about the index of industrial production now with the inception of central statistical organization which is now known as the national statistic office 
In the year 1951, the responsibility for the compilation and the publication of the Index of Industrial Production was vested with NSO. Now, this industrial production it measures the it measures the growth economic growth in eight core industries. So, the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. The base here, this is the ministry, this is the nodal ministry which handles the index of industrial production and the base here is two, 2011 to 2012. This is an important base here. The sources of data that is NSO compiles the IIP using secondary data received from 14 source agencies in various ministries, departments or their attached subordinate offices. There is a source of data from which the NSO compiles the IIP is using the secondary data which is received from 14 source agencies, ministries, departments or some attached or subordinate offices. Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion is the source for the major chunk of data for the calculation. So DIP is the source for major chunk of data for the calculation. So these are the 8 core industries. The eight core sector industries such as refinery products, electricity, steel, coal, crude oil, natural gas, cement, fertilizers, etc. So I hope so far the article is clear. So the main gist of the article is about keeping the credit condition, keeping the credit condition sustainable. Now let us look at this prelims question. That in the index of 8 core industries, which one of the following is given the highest weightage? So the 8 core industries are the refinery and the petroleum. Then we have got the electricity. Right? Then we have steel, coal, crude oil, natural gas. Right? cement and then we have fertilizers so out of these eight core industries refinery and petroleum and electricity they have the highest weightage they have the highest weightage out of these two options only electricity has the highest weightage their highest weightage therefore b will be our correct answer coal fertilizer steel production they have lower weightage than the electricity so that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching Tarun IS. I hope you understood this article about keeping the credit conditions sustainable in order to boost the economic growth. If you want to download the PDF of this session, you can go to the Telegram channel. The link will be given in the description below. Have a nice day.